one zero. All right, let's see. Takes about 30, 45 seconds. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, I can feel it in my body. Hmm. I feel like the feel like the especially my extremities, my fingertips, my toes. All right. Let's see here. Yeah, it's on. All right. Well, we got six in the house. I'll give him a few more. Give him a 30 seconds or so. Let him come on in. Hello, Janet Allen. Janet Ann Gilliam. How you doing? Anna Horton. Janice Anderson. What's up, my brother? The light language. Might see a little bit of light language today or whatever that is. <laughs> Daniels has got a totally different style. Uh, Laura Brown. Marilyn Biggers. How are you doing? Uh, Marcy Duros. Patricia, how you doing from the Bronx? Uh, Eric Alleman. Hey, All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, they're filling up now. Hey, Michelle, how you doing? Thank you for always uh, being there. Love and support contributions. So we got a uh, we got a part two. Hello, New Zealand. We got a part two. Uh, the Soul Speaks Five D. I'm Todd Medina. This is Soul G Network. Today we're having a conversation for the second time. Honored to have that conversation with Daniel Scranton out of uh, Hawaii. Uh, very respected. Been doing this for quite some time. And uh, I think I might freeze up a little bit. We got a signal, but it shouldn't mess up the audio. Thank you, Daniel, for coming back. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing space with us, honoring us with your presence. That was a great post you put out the other day. I was just talking to you about it, the Arcturian uh, channeling. But I know you you actually channel every day, don't you? Yeah, it's hard to keep track of them. Yeah, <laughs> right. You're like, which one are you talking about? Yeah, I can't. Even, I can't. It's that three D memory. I can't even remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, man, you're over there in Hawaii, and, man, this, you know, September was a kick-ass month. <laughs> it's like, but these these first, uh, what is it, six days in October? My God, what what the hell's going on? <laughs> it's it's all good. I Don't get me wrong, but do you have any insight? I'm sure you do. My cat does. Um yeah. I don't know. I just feel like things are going to get more and more intense as we continue on here. And more and more people seem to be open now than ever before. And a lot of that has to do with the positive expectations that people have for something big happening. So it seems like every time, every year around this time of year, there's a, there's a, Few people coming out with major, with predictions of major events. We had Bashar a few years ago, yeah, say yeah. fall of 2016. Um, mm -hmm. I, I remember hearing Matt Kahn predicting a big shift around the end of September one year. Um, another channel named Susie Byler. Uh, I'm sure there's, I, I don't follow that many other people these days. I don't follow anybody really consistently. I just, whatever pops into my awareness, then I become aware of it. But um, I'm sure there's been a lot of predictions out there. And what those predictions are doing is helping people to expect to receive more. Yeah. So they, yeah. they then, they get more open and they, you know, they go to places like Shasta and Sedona and they, and camp out and like you were talking about before we came on about being under the stars and <laughs> the, cat's, yeah. the cat's really into this conversation um, about connecting with nature and, and when you're in that space, when you're just in your joy, that's, yeah. that's something I keep hearing from the Arcturians. As long as we just keep following our joy, we're gonna be more open and receptive and then we're going to be better conduits of energy, which then makes us of more value to everybody else. Yeah. Because I think right now, what a lot of people are confused about, this is what I, I keep hearing in sessions with people, 
because they don't know what to do. People really don't have an idea about what to do with themselves as far as like a physical action goes. And that's why I think it's so important for us to just listen to yeah. what we're being guided to from within. So the little voice says, um, go to the beach or go to the woods or take a trip somewhere to Bali or somewhere like that. You know, you got to follow that because that's what's going to open us up more and give us more of that sense that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. A, lot, a whole lot of receiving more than anything else. Yeah. Being open to the receiving. Yeah. 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 Because we're getting it from all angles. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's not just one. It's not just, um, not just when Lion's Gate is open, for example, but uh, every day there's something that we can receive. Uh, the Arcturians, for me, are always talking about that. They're always talking about what new upgrades or downloads they're initiating or what's going on with uh, the sun or the earth or the photon belt or something is happening. And usually it's all at the same time, but then, but then we have these moments. So people are already, I've noticed, getting excited about uh, November 11th. Yeah. So you start to see posts about November 11th, November 11th, and it's only October 6th. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but here we are preparing for more, preparing. So this is, I think, what, what actually happens is that if people – knew how much energy and information and downloads and upgrades were available to them at all times, they'd probably be doing a lot more of that, uh, you know, going to some sacred site or some just some place they really like and putting themselves in that open and receptive state so that they yeah. could uh, receive from whomever. I mean, there's just, there's so many beings out there that are helping yeah. us and, you know, the more we, we shut off the, the electronics and and uh, just be a bit more active, you know, get outside more, let the let the sun on our faces and things like that. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna find that it's so much easier than having to wait for the shift or the event or whatever, you know, because when people, when people hear from my guides, how long it's going to take for that to happen, they immediately get discouraged instead of thinking about like, well, what can I, what can I do right now? Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be, I don't have to wait for the, the biggest shift in the history of the solar system to uh, experience something, to have a, a new awakening, uh, an opening of the third eye, uh, awakening of the Kundalini, uh, all, you know, there's so many things that are available to us. Astral travel, yeah, we don't have to wait. Yeah. We don't have to just sit around and, and wait for something. Well, I like what you said about uh, the uh, expectation that these predictions create. Yeah. Even though even though it's linear, they're, they're, they're off. But uh, but it makes sense that the collective consciousness would, you know, need to get to a certain point before we can get to a certain level. I uh, think so. I think we we need to ease into this shift more so than to hit it with a hammer. Yeah. And and you know and then have to clean up the the huge mess that would be made from. Uh, so many people not being able to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that, uh, especially after today. You know, like I said, you know, be careful what you ask for. I can feel this, which is to me my biggest, <clears throat> my biggest expansion. Uh -huh. A lot of it's in my body, which I've felt before, but I, but I see more and more posts of people talking about that. Um, there just seems to be a lot more congruence or a lot, a lot more of a common denominator what people are actually 
uh, seeing and feeling, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. You said that uh, when when your clients hear the timeline from the Arcturians or whoever you're channeling, right. they get a little bit despondent. Uh, and I'm really not, I, I don't put anything into the linear myself, but I'm just curious as to what what kind of timeline are they talking about and what are they talking about? You know, a lot of people talk about the event and the, the you know, the, the, the moment this happens and that. I, I'm not attached to any of that but what what are they saying what are your what are your uh, your channeling uh, uh, sources saying that it looks like on the linear timeline and what is that event if there is one uh they've been saying this year they've been saying 10 years and then you know they've been saying saying that long enough now throughout the year that now it's down to nine and a half yeah <laughs> so it's going to be 2028 20, yeah apparently um where when the event happens and the, what the event is it's a cosmic wave of energy you know all celestial bodies all benevolent beings everybody who has been helping us and wanting to see our ship coming in with this huge uh, transmission of love all at once so we all get hit by it all at once which if you've been preparing yourself for that by working on yourself, letting go of the, the lower frequency stuff and opening yourself up to the higher frequency stuff and taking care of your body and your mind and your emotions and everything like that, then it, it should be a really nice experience. Yeah. But if you've been denying what you have to feel and numbing yourself and not giving any attention to these changes that are available to us, then I think it's going to be harder on those people. Yeah. And then there's a school of thought uh, that if you want to call them uh, Blu-rays or way showers or first waivers, uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, that they're going through something entirely different in preparation yeah. to anchor for those oh, that, yeah, that's totally what I get in my channels. Yeah, that those those who are awake now, obviously made that decision. Doesn't have anything to do with being more enlightened as a soul, yeah. or you know, like we used to talk about older souls and newer souls, and I think it was just a choice. So you can choose to have this experience before you incarnate in a number of different ways. And for those of us who are awake, we decided we would wake up when we did, that we would want to be of service to others. And then, you know, we'll have our unique experience of the event and the shift. Yeah. I, I, I look at others. We'll be helping others through throughout the course of these next nine and a half years or however long it takes. And then on that moment that it happens when people are having breakdowns and, and having to look at all their stuff all at once, you know, we'll be there with compassion because we went through it. Yeah. So it we know, yeah, that really sucks what you're going through. <laughs> and I, I know, you know, that the, the only thing for you to do is to go through it. And I, I'm sorry, but I'm here for you. Yeah. What do you need? You know, and then so, the flip, then the flip side of that, I think of Lisa Brown out there with you in Hawaii, and you know the conversations I've had with her, and she talks about where she lives and how the environment there, the clouds, the sky, everything in her environment is a different is a different uh, place than what's outside of it. Uh, and on that note, I mean, and it would only make sense to me. I'd like to hear your thoughts that for those of us who have woken up and taken on this role uh, would be walking in a different frequency as we go through this uh, period between now and then, uh, you know, and, and, and basically living uh, that joy you were talking about uh, and creating uh, what will be created by everybody eventually. Does that ring true with you? Yeah, I think we're, um, for example, I made a decision back in 2001 
that I was not going to go sit in an office building for not for eight hours a day or however long. I, I just wasn't going to do it. If I had to go live in a van down by the river, <laughs> I would have done it. I, I would have I would have done whatever it took. Basically, I thought about um, I thought about, and I was twenty eight. 20, about to be 29, thinking about moving back in with one of my parents or something, you know, whatever it took to have the freedom to, to ex be out in nature every day. And, you know, I think I mentioned last time really into raw foods. And so back, back then I would sit at lunch and eat three whole melons in, in a sitting and you can't really bring three, I mean, you can, but it's going to be really messy if you're going to an office and then the air conditioning. And then, you know, I just, I, the last office job I had, it was just such a toxic environment. Yeah. I just, I just knew I didn't want to go back. And I think more and more people that I connect with are, are feeling that way about their lives. They, they're saying, you know, here on Maui, and I'm sure it's true on Kauai where Lisa is and Big Island and all over Hawaii. Um, people live on the beach. They live in tents. They live in their car. Um, you know, obviously getting too cold at night is not a problem. Um, finding a place to park your car if you're living in a car can be a problem for those people. But um, there are a lot of people who are just deciding, you know what, uh, no matter what, I'm, I've got to live the life that I know that I need to live. And um, lucky, lucky for me, I never did have to live in my car. But um, the, the more you, you put yourself and your freedom and how you feel first, the more then you're able to give to others. Yeah. These channelings, these channelings, I got a little reverb. These channelings, these channelings uh, that, uh, you do that you do with your clients, but you also do it on your own. I mean, you do that as a practice, pre, I guess, like every day. Every, uh, almost every day. I had some, some days off recently, and yeah. I just take older quotes. I've been doing it for six and a half years. I just take an older one that I have on YouTube, and I recycle it. Yeah. But for yeah. the most part, every day, yeah. And 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 in the gist of what's coming out right now, I mean, are are the transmissions involved with what's just going on now, or is it more out in the future? It's mostly what's going on now. It's mostly what people need to hear. Um, I heard from a client of mine today who I was I had a channeling lesson with, so I teach channeling too, and she was saying that it's uncanny how often because she's connected to the Arcturian Council too. So she'll she'll get something from them herself, and then she'll read the exact same thing in something that I've channeled. Right. Um, you know, she'll see it right after. And it's just, so it's, they're giving us what we need. They're, they're tuning into us and saying, what do they, what do they need to hear? And then bring it through myself and others. Yeah. And the, uh, I, I don't know where I picked this up, but like the Arcturians, if I understood it right, they're, they have a certain characteristic about them, like a certain role that they play in the galactic community, or at least in their mission here on earth. And if I believe, I, if I remember correctly, it has to do with structure and, and building stuff or framing stuff up. Do you have any insight on that or, or what their role may be? Well, my understanding of the Arcturian star system is it's where you go when you, incar you incarnate there when you want to explore the, your spirituality. That's, that's basically what you want to focus on. Uh, so you're not really interested, you know, it's not about uh, the physical as much as the non-physical. It's in the beings who go there would be learning how to levitate and you know, strengthening their their ability to 
open their third eyes and help others do that as well. So in terms of what the Arcturian star system is like, that, that much I know. I would say based on what we see coming through different people like myself, I channel Pleiadians for a while. I still do occasionally. But you'll see a lot of people channeling Pleiadians. So the Pleiadians seem to be about uh, teaching, uh, healing, helping, guiding, things like that. That that seems to be what they're they're exploring and and their feeling of stewardship o over humanity, sort of. Yeah. Or wanting to take care of us and and guide us and teach us. What I feel the Arcturians are doing is more about. And I've channeled a lot of different beings and collectives for these daily messages. The Arcturians are the first group that I've ever channeled who talk about what they're actively doing to help us in terms of giving us upgrades, giving us downloads, sending us energy, working with physical, the non-physical ones I channel working with physical ETs and coordinating, coordinating with different councils and collectives and, uh, you know, all sorts of beings across the federations and so on to, to coordinate the efforts for humanity. So they're the, they really seem to be about being very proactive with us in terms of how they can actually physically help and, um, what type of the one of the recent transmissions was about helping us with our energy fields and working with the energy fields of earth to help create a sort of uh shield or a buffer from emfs and things like that for each individual so they're, they're working on that right now so that's the kind of that's the kind of help that we're getting from them yeah yeah and what about the, uh, or if you know, what about like the um, the pl the planetary, the Earth planet, uh, inner Earth, uh, Sasquatch, uh, the, the the elementals, the phase that are here. Uh, do you do you ever communicate with uh, with them? And if so, what kind of role are they playing? Well, I can speak specifically for from my work about the fairies because. Uh, I started channeling a fairy named Ophelia uh, a couple years after I started channeling. So I'm guessing that would be around 2012 I started channeling Ophelia. Or no, it was 2013. Um, and the, the fairies are basically what we're becoming. We're basically becoming fairies as we become fifth dimensional. We're becoming our higher selves, we are uh, embodying light bodies, the fairies all have light bodies. So that's where we're going and so they're holding space for all of us. So most fairies are fifth dimensional and are holding space and then we're fourth dimensional right now which means we can sometimes get a glimpse of a fairy or have an interaction with a fairy if we raise our vibration up to meet them. Um, the, the fourth dimensional fairies, the ones that have stayed behind, I believe that they're, they're also holding space for us, but in a different way. They're trying to make life on earth better for us and remind us that we are children at heart that, you know, reminding us to play and laugh and sing and dance. Um, but I do think that when, when we shift, we're going to be very fairy-like and we'll probably be, we'll be met by fairies initially and they'll be inviting us to the fifth dimension. Wow. As far as the other beings go, I mean, all I know is what I've heard on Cosmic Disclosure. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I know about, I know that there are, uh, 
inner earth beings right now and that they are reaching out and reaching up. Um, sometimes I'll channel about them, but it's rare. Um, but yeah, I do know that they're, they're wanting to, I think that for us to make that contact, that open contact, because obviously some people are connecting with them and meeting up with them physically, but most of us aren't, but that's a good stepping stone towards us being able to handle the fact that there are ETs out there yeah. that want to connect with us. Yeah. And, and what would you say to someone or let me, let me reframe it. Um, if we have the desire uh, and we reach out, you know, ask and you will, you know, knock and the door will be open. Can, can we, can we can reach out to any, any of our star family, any of the elementals, any of the, uh, you know, the universal family, families, we can, any of us can do that. Cause like you said a minute ago, some people are, are communicating with the fairies, some see them, some don't. And you hear a lot of people saying, Hey, they can do that. I can't do it. I mean, is it, is it, is it, I hate to use the word simple, but is it as simple as just having the desire and taking the responsibility of making that connection and, and having a communication with any of them? Certainly. There's a lot I want to say about that. So, uh, first of all, it's important not to think of them as far away. It's, a, it's important not to think that the ninth dimension is a far away place. The ninth dimension is right here. It's right, it's right on top of us, but we're fourth dimensional, so we don't experience it. Um, it's also important to see that everything and everyone, every group, every collective, every being we want to connect with is actually inside of us that we live in a holographic universe. So when you think about, say, reaching out to another human, if you just want to go talk to your wife, you just go into the next room or your husband or whoever, you just go into the next room and you start a conversation. If the person's further away, you may have to pick up the phone. Uh, if the person's in another country, you got to figure out time zones and then Skype and all that. And so we tend to think that the further away the person it is, in terms of uh, if they're in Russia or somewhere, then it's harder to connect. Right. And I think we, take, we can take that same sort of mindset to connecting with these beings and think, well, it must be harder. So when you think of them as being internal to you, that the, the Arcturians you want to connect with are also inside of you, then it becomes easier and you can focus more in the way that you really need to focus to make these connections, which is to focus within. The other thing I think people do which doesn't serve them is they, they want to interact with these beings in the same way that they interact with other humans. So they want to hear a voice in their head or they yeah. want to see them. So if I can see you or I can hear you, then I know that this is real and verifiable and I'm not crazy, it's not stall in my head. So basically what I think people need to do more, and this is with their guides, with any beings, is feel for them. So the first time I connected with Ophelia in the forest, I had a sort of an intuitive knowing that I was in a spot in the forest where I, I just knew this is where the fairies hang out. This, this looks like fairy territory. So I would take my shoes off and walk barefoot and really slowly through that part and I would feel for the energy of the fairies. And the first thing that started happening was, you know, you feel lighthearted, you feel giggly, and then I would tone, like a, a really high pitched tone would come through me automatically. And so then I knew I was making contact. From there, it's an easier uh, place to go to channeling Ophelia the fairy than to just say, 
okay, I'm just going to sit now and I'm going to channel and, you know, I need to bring in a fairy. Yeah. Uh, so you, you definitely want, and this is true of all channeling. I think that the thing about channeling that is underemphasized is that it's a feeling experience. And like you were talking to me about earlier, you were talking about receiving waves of energy through your body. Yeah. That's what channeling is. But it's, it's something that you get to a point where you can summon those waves. You can, you can attune yourself and, and change your, your vibration, the, the dials, so that you are in alignment with, with those waves. And then those waves come into you. And then what does that energy do? That energy doesn't just want to uh, sort of fester. It's a terrible choice of words, but you know the energy wants to move. It wants to. It doesn't just want to sit in your body. So when you give that energy a voice, then you're channeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and so if you look at the type of connections that you want to make, as well, first I want to feel something. And then once I once the feeling inside of me builds up to a certain point, it's going to sort of explode out of me. Rather than, I mean, if you're going to channel from your mind, then your mind's also going to be second guessing and doubting and all that stuff because your mind is going to say, "Well, you're crazy." You're crazy. Yeah, or or that that was just something you heard someone else say. Um, so you've got to, you've got to have the channeling experience, be a full body experience where you're fully engaged, you're fully grounded in your body. Um, you're not trying to get out of your body so your body can be used like a, like a puppet, like a ventriloquist dummy. You know, you, you want to always realize that this the channeling experience now is more than ever about us being able to raise our vibration yeah. and, and ground in more high frequency energy. And then the, and then the words will come, you know, yeah. and, and it'll be nice and people will, people will like the words, <laughs> but, um, but the channeling itself, if you just put your intention on, I want to feel something I've never felt before. I mean, isn't that what we all want? Yeah. Yeah. And this is something we and this is I something want to know where the treasure is buried, or I want to know the winning lottery numbers are <laughs> those types of things, you're you're less likely to, to make a connection. Yeah. And then you're saying too, it's an internal summoning versus like we're looking out into the cosmos and externally summoning something. It's an internal. It's both. That's the tricky part too, is that the, you know, the hologram is, is such that there are essentially different parts of the hologram, um, even though we're all essentially the same, uh, we're, we're, we are wearing different outfits, you know, we're all playing different roles. So, you can see it as both you're connecting to beings that because obviously uh, you can look out at the night sky and you can see Arcturus is out there as well, you know, yeah. the actual star and, and yet uh, all of that is also inside of you. So it's both. Yeah. Yeah. And that's you're right. That's the tricky part. Uh, I talked to you last time about something that me and uh, my divine partner had gone through where there was physical morphing. Uh, and I guess where does, you know, well, let me, let's, let me reframe this one. So, uh, you know, I'm laying in bed, these white bird like things come into the room, the Rocturian. Uh, I, I would look at that now with your explanation that they're, and like you said, the ninth dimension's here. Uh, they're basically allowing themselves to be seen, or maybe I'm raising my frequency. I wasn't trying to do anything, but right. they came in, so they kind of lowered it. But what about this 
the physical morphing uh, of our what we would call matter, you know, where it's in that in between of between the etherical and uh, the physical. Is that something that you think we'll be seeing more and more of? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do. I think uh, we're ready for more. Uh, we're, we're demonstrating that uh, we can handle more. Uh, every experience, every time someone like you or someone else has an experience like that, we're showing our readiness for more. So, yeah, yeah I do think there's going to be more of that. And I think it's going to be a part of the awakening process part of the process of getting us more into that galactic family phase that we want to be in, where we're all connected throughout the galaxy. Um, and to see these dimensional lines as a bit more blurry yeah. is important. It's important for us to know that uh, we could essentially raise our vibration right now and start having a fifth dimensional experience of reality. There's no, there, there's nothing stopping us from doing that. The thing that stops us from staying there is the agreement that we made to stick around with the rest of the collective and be of service. Because yeah. if everyone who was awake started rising up to the fifth dimension and left the, everyone else behind in the fourth dimension, uh, there wouldn't be enough yeah. light. Yeah. There, there wouldn't be enough people holding the, the space for humanity in the way that, you know, we, we obviously really still need in order to uh, to maintain the balance and some sanity here. I don't give a don't lot, give a lot to, to what goes on, what the, goes external. on the external. Like the world like stage. The world. And of course, right now, there's a lot, you know, a lot of talk about what's been going on, Supreme Court and this and that and all that. Q, QAnon and, and all that stuff. I don't really pay attention to it. I keep my eye on it just as a reflection of what we're all putting out. But uh, just just a quick question on that. How much of a bearing uh, is that uh, with the galactic family? How much of how much of what is actually happening in the physicality on Earth? with the governments, with the religions, with disclosure and so on. How much of a factor is that? Or is that all just the illusion, just a mirror, or just a, just a, you know, the matrix playing out? Well, if something is, um, if something is integrative in nature, if it's meant to bring us together, then it's something to give more attention to. I would say to people who are jumping on the QAnon bandwagon, um, be careful because you can't believe everything you read on the internet. Um, is there truth in what people in that group are saying? Of course. Of course there's going to be some truth in everything. There's, there's a, a degree of truth. You know, you can, most of us who are uh, participating in this right now are probably not big Bible thumpers, but there are truths in the Bible. Yeah. But there are also other things in the Bible that um, are pretty disempowering yeah. so, and, and pretty polarizing. So um, if that's, you know, if, if you find yourself starting to wear a, a shirt with a Q on it and joining some kind of cult, you, I, I mean, you're probably too far gone at this point. But... <laughs> but um, uh, don't believe everything. Yeah. That don't, don't look. So what we have right now in this country is you're either very pro President Trump or very anti President Trump. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be any middle ground. Yeah. In regards to that individual, and so so what does that say that he's a polarizing figure? Yeah. So anything that's polarizing, not good for us. Don't give your attention to it. Anything that's integrative, you go to uh, a place where people are talking about the uh, power of diversity and how we all need to come together regardless of our beliefs. And you, you see now, I mean, I probably just made a lot of enemies with what I said about QAnon. 
but um, it, you see divisiveness within our spiritual community. Yeah. You know, you, and, and it's sad. It's really sad because if anyone needs to be bringing people together, it's us. It's, yeah. it's, we can't see ourselves as, uh, you know, creating different in the same way you have Christianity and then you have all these different sects of yeah. Christianity and some Lutherans really don't like Baptists. And so, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. Well, and we're getting to that point in the new age now where everyone has their, their different religions within the new age. And, but we don't call it that. But if you're if you're subscribing to something to such a degree that you're pushing these other New Agers away, then then we're seeing more more of the same yeah. you know, in our more enlightened realm that we're supposed to be in. Yeah. You, well, you, had, you yeah. said a key you said a key word. Well, the other side of it, the the opposite of it. You said you talked about disempowerment. But empowerment seems to be the order of the day, you know, yeah. empowering ourselves and anything that we give away our power to, such as right. what's the difference between QAnon or Trump or anything else external, be it a church or a country or whatever, that's going to come save us, you know? It's right. like, you know, like you were saying earlier, this thing is being piecemealed and we're being given uh, at our own, at our own volition, what we can, what we can accept without frying our brains basically because you know it, it's it's a lot to take in you know uh i wanted to ask you uh if if you if you want to i'm not attached to it uh if you wanted to uh to do a little channeling like you did last time with the tones people really responded to that i got a lot of messages about it sure you, we we would appreciate it we'd be honored would you like a uh a tone with a particular intention. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm open to whatever comes, and unless you think of something. Well, since we were just talking about the <clears throat> the difference between something that's more polarizing and something that's more integrative, and about bringing us together and unifying us, let's do yeah. more. For uh, especially on the day that someone gets yeah. approved for the Supreme Court, that's that's causing a lot of people pain. Let, let's um, focus on bringing the poles together and bringing us together as a uh, as a, a one race. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Oh, my God. 
<clears throat> That's fantastic, man. That was fantastic, <laughs> brother. <laughs> very unique, very unique, very powerful, very powerful. It leveled me off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I feel different after every time. Yeah. It feels, it feels amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. I was talking to a friend I met here in Sedona a couple of days ago, and she does what she calls light, well, light language, but also star language. And uh, she's been doing it for quite some time. And she was talking about how, you know, when she started, there wasn't too many people doing it. And now it's right. becoming more and more prevalent. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with that? Because I know uh, uh, more and more people will start speaking light languages to the point where it'll be like a stepping stone for us from speaking in our usual tongue to uh, telepathy. Yeah. Yeah. That, like the, that, that which takes us to that point where we're ready to be telepathic. Yeah, like a bridge, the bridge to telepathy. Yeah. yeah. Somebody asked, can you tell us what was coming through? I think you had already explained that, but I want to be sure I didn't miss anything. This was about unity consciousness. It was about yeah. coming together. Yeah. So, so toning, a good way to approach toning is to start off by holding an intention for something and then uh, make a vowel sound with your voice and hold it. So most people are familiar with ohm. Yeah. Uh, ohm is really like a long O with an M at the end. So it's, it's like that. You can do that with A. Or any or any vowel, and of course, a has the long version, like I just did, and yeah. the short version is a a h. And so you can focus on what what your intention is, and then just what you can do is you can just be open to whatever comes through. You don't have to say you don't have to say, well, this intention is for this, so I should channel this sound. Or I should yeah. not. I should make this sound, and then eventually, what happened with me is that all I really did was say I want to channel overtones. Yeah. Uh, or make. I didn't even think channel at that time. I thought I could make them with my, you know, by by learning, um, yeah. and then I started channeling them. So uh, eventually, just doing that intentional toning can lead to some channeled. Uh, tones which are fun yeah and so uh, would it be safe to say that uh, an individual holding an intention like in this case of unity consciousness uh, in their own place in their own space and time could do this uh, through toning uh, through light language through dancing uh, through movement um, yeah yeah and yeah. and that and that it has it does have uh, an impact on the collective when we do stuff when we do this. That was a recent transmission from the Arcturians, yeah. yeah. About how we we impact uh, everyone else regardless of whether they ever see it or hear it. Yeah. In the flesh. So it's what you're putting out, yeah. I've got I've got another curious question. When I got to uh, Sedona, I was south of town and I was driving a car to go meet uh, a friend of mine. And I was passing through these grandfather rocks. And here we go again with the holograph. And, and of course, it's all this. And I could, and when you said that to me about holding the attention, it reminded me of it. I hadn't thought of it in a while. But anyway, what happened was I could, I could feel and really see, I guess, third eye, these grandfathers that were basically rejoicing like, and I can't really explain why. And I guess my question is, was that me? <laughs> or and, and I started to just do these sounds, these kind of indigenous sounds, but I could literally feel 
the uh, intention and the expansion of the intention. Was that me being triggered by the grandfather rocks or was that just me coming from me? Or I guess both is probably the answer. <laughs> <laughs> in that in that mystery of what this uh, is all. That's, that's the beauty of going to a place like Sedona or going to a place like Shasta or Bali or wherever you want to go where uh, Machu Picchu, where not only has a lot of cool stuff happen there, but there's been an intention to maintain uh, the, the pristine energy of the place. Yeah. And people are holding that space. So when you walk into a place like that and or you drive through or whatever you were, you were driving, right? Yes. By myself. <laughs> you definitely uh, run into some of these energies and and then uh like i was saying earlier about channeling you you get the energy first it comes in and then it comes out yeah. some way it, it, it has to be expressed in some way and so um a lot of times now when i'm just lying in bed and all my intention is is to do some receiving i do a, a conscious receiving um, I'll just start toning. It, it, it won't be intentional. It will be like the, like these movements. When you saw these movements, that's I didn't plan to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't plan these things. They just happen. Yeah. Um, and, and the toning sometimes will just come through. So I understand that like when you connect with energy, uh, toning is a way to express it, just like light language is. Um, just like the first time I ever spoke a light language, I think I told you in our last interview, I was getting a massage. I wasn't trying, I didn't know what a light language was, um, but there it was coming through. <laughs> I wonder what the masseuse thought. I guess, well, I guess, thought, I guess, you know, I guess. Thought, she thought it was Atlantean. So she was, uh, yeah. he was really tuned in to um, energy and she she was clairvoyant she would see things during our massages too but um so luckily i had the right masseuse for that it must be interesting to be your partner she must uh hear quite a few things oh, from I, i'm the dullard in the family she's the <laughs> one she's the one that uh has so many freaking gifts and is tuned in to so much and and like it's funny because uh you know, many more people know about me than her, but she is freaking amazing. You know, she she taps. She's a medical intuitive, so she she knows what's going on. My my stepfather died this year. She never met him. She had yet to meet my mom because my mom is you know six thousand miles away in Florida, and my stepdad died. And that night, he came to her in a dream, and they had never met. <laughs> and she described him, and she she she'd never seen a picture of him. Wow. She was to describe him. So yeah, she's really tuned in. So I I have no problem um, with uh, being relatable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, relatable. How does how does that how does that work? You know, I don't know if I asked you this last time, but obviously both of you are beating a very similar of the same vibration. I mean, do you guys elevate each other? Uh, do you do you go through the normal human things? That, oh yeah, uh, we go through the normal, normal human things. Yeah, um, but um, you know, she she's so she's such a bright light. You know, everywhere she goes, everybody falls in love with her. Everybody wants to be her friend. Um, so I, you know, and right now I'm I'm busier than she is with clients. So. I get all that benefit of being around her and being, you know, being fed by all the love and the light that she's exuding all the time. And, and it really makes, uh, you know, I feel like she's the light of my life. You know, she's, she's what gives me a, a reason to get up in the morning. So, and, and she's never had a, 
a partner in any relationship like me either. Yeah. So she feels completely supported and feels, you know, listened to and loved and, and all, you know, I, I do the best I can. And she, she knows that I'm, you know, I'm doing a pretty good job. So we got a quick question here from my friend Sandra down in Adelaide, Australia. She says, Daniel, have you worked with any children? And if so, how do they respond to your light language transmissions? Oh, well, I haven't worked with children per se, but I hear from clients who tell me that their children listen to the, the uh, recordings on YouTube. Yeah. You know, if they purchase a recording on my site of me doing something. The children listen, and some children will tone along with me. Um, you know, so so children do respond, seem to to get it in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty yeah. powerful. That's a talk yeah. about talk about a mass awakening. You know, I can just see that light language just lighting these kids up, and they'll just take it the rest of the way for us. Your, uh, your partner sounds extremely fascinating, and I'm sure uh, you guys are a fascinating couple. And uh, I don't know if she'd be interested, but if sometime the both of you want to come on and, uh-huh. uh, and have a conversation and uh, see what kind of uh, you know, dialogue comes out of it, I'd be more than up for that. I think it'd be, I think it'd be very activating for many people. Excellent. Yeah. So, and your YouTube is, is Daniel Scranton, right? Or is it, does well, it have? I, I started my YouTube channel. I used to go by Dan. So you, <laughs> you can't change your YouTube yeah. channel name. Uh, no, I shouldn't say, I don't know if you can change your name, but anyway, um, the, what comes after the forward slash youtube.com forward slash, it's forward slash Dan Scranton, not Daniel. Dan but, Scranton. Um, okay. but if you search for Daniel Scranton, of course, uh, uh, luckily I don't have a lot of, competition from the other Daniel Scrantons of the world. So, <laughs> yeah, finally, really easily. Yeah, that's uh that's that's been a challenge for me because uh there is a Todd Medina that was some kind of MMA fighter that was pretty good for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, you sound mean. <laughs> uh, like seven years ago I'd go, Am I am I coming up yet? <laughs> it must have taken three or four years. Yeah. Let's see, I think I got one more here. Let's see. Uh, no, I think I, I got that one. Well, listen, I really appreciate it. Uh, I don't know. Do you have a website also? Yes, DanielScranton.com. That's right. That's what. That's where I got the Daniel Scranton from because I have seen you on YouTube. Uh, yeah, so just so everybody knows, DanielScranton.com. Check them out. Let's support them. Um, if there's ever anything, like I told you before, uh, that you'd like to get out there, in any way I can help you, Soldier can help you through our network, we'll be glad to do that. I look forward, uh, would love to sit down with you again. I really enjoyed talking to you. Like I said, if you and your partner would like to come on sometime, uh, you don't have to ask for, uh, wait for me to ask. You know, you can certainly hit me up if you guys are interested, if and when it resonates. Yes, yes, I'm sure she'll be up for it. Excellent. And if you go to my website and subscribe, um, they get those daily channelings every day sent to their inbox. Um, so it's a good it's a good way to keep up with what the latest uh, transmission from the Arcturians is. To sign up for my newsletter, um, I just put out a book actually on Amazon. I self published. Oh really? Two hundred and forty of the best of those transmissions that I've done from the Arcturian Council. So it's called it's actually called Ascension: Colon the Shift to the Fifth Dimension. And, ascension, um, ascension colon. Let me get a the pen. Shift, the shift to the fifth dimension. Okay. And it's um, 240 of those uh, transmissions from the Arcturians and uh, split up into chapters. I've gotten good feedback from it about it. So excellent. Well, I'll go to it now. I didn't catch that subscription last time. I've been to your website. I didn't catch it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and subscribe to that myself. And uh, I'm going to put that out on the network. I'm going to put your book out on the network. And I would just encourage anybody listening on the live or the replay, 
uh, having gone through this, if you didn't see the first uh, show we did, you can go to uh, you can go to YouTube. You can go to so uh, Soldier One Studios. Uh, it's on there. It's also in the uh, photos under albums, under videos. And you'd have to go back. It's in chronological order. But you'd see Daniel's face on the video screen. Daniel, I just want to say thanks again. It's an honor always talking to you. Hope I get to meet you in person sometime. Yeah. And uh, like I said, if you guys want to come on, I'm sure I'll be hitting you up in a few weeks. <laughs> but, but you don't have to wait on me if she's interested. I think it'd be a great show. Right. I'd love to meet you. You take okay. care. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, okay. brother. Take care, Todd. Bye yeah. now. Peace out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.